planter build video four. Here you're seeing it basically assembled or partially assembled. The railings I built, which are now being taken back off. Got the new wheels here. These were made by the Wold Wheel Company. Very thick, heavy duty wheel uh, for a 21.5L 16 wheel tire. That centers very thick. I think it's half inch thick. Solid centers. Really good wheels. Got the handrails made. Uh, quite challenging when all you have is a simple conduit bender and over here we're getting ready to mount the CCS assembly which I have uh, back in the center section there stairways done all the holes are drilled so it's all getting tore down actually as well as taking the tanks here out uh, getting ready for paint and this frame rail here is done uh, in the last video I did mention how I wish that this assembly would have had one in the center and the two two by fours down the back that would basically have mimicked uh, like a 1790 or 1795 but that's a continuous line weld bead here and i just don't have the tools if i had a really good bender or something i could have just copied it all i just didn't have the tools uh, at my disposal that's one of the limitations of this whole project is just having the right uh, tools and equipment so came in here and got all this tied together looks really good and really ideally this needs to be pulled outside and sandblasted now but again i don't even know anybody that can sandblast there might be one guy in the area at a pretty expensive rate and all the sandblast guys have all quit so we're just gonna have to hand sand it the best we can and soap and water in the shop here because we got single digit temperatures as we're getting ready to do this and uh fall over some tools here to my death as I film this. New markers are on. I found out there is a solid uh, piece for here. This is a hollow tube. You can see how the set screw, we reversed it, but I found out there's a solid piece for no-till as a factory option. Ordered it. So we got those new assemblies here. Here's that solid shaft. I hope it works out. I'm gonna keep the tags in case it doesn't. They might be too heavy, but it was no-till rated, so instead of an angle, your blade so heavy, they just got a little natural weight built in. And parts and pieces are stacking up over here in the shop. There's my rear end assembly toe kick for the uh, goes above the platform here. So I'm tearing this down actually now. Finish up a few mounts and some frame rail stuff, and we're actually gonna start sanding and. Be pretty well ready for uh, repainting the main frame so then we can reassemble as we go and that'll kind of give it a factory appearance you know bolts that are not painted over actually an assembled style uh, paint job i really wish those front two supports had been one in the middle so it is what it is but we're making good progress got a real nice stairway access from the st uh, hitch on up two handrails front platform instead of coming down to the rear. That was all explained in the previous videos. My biggest hurdle here is is limitations on uh, tooling. I just don't have the tooling. Um, if I had more tools to work with or CNC cutters or stuff like that, there could have been some better bracketry. I mean, I could have even cut this all out of one pattern. And I still got to grind this all, blend it all together, but you know, I had to cut all this and pattern it all together. And one of the reasons I did is this bolts to the bottom plate, so you can take those bolts out, these bolts out, and the ones to back off. All the frame can come up off here as well, if desired. I'm trying to build everything as componentry parts, so you can assemble and disassemble as needed. New wheel bearings on this side, getting ready to do the other side. This uh, tool board back here is a 7x7, 7 7, 3 8 inch thick tube. Real heavy, that's markers there. Uh, the way that they do those, I mentioned in my last video about a 1735 planter. This would be a 1785, 1735, 1785 are both 815s. The difference is the 1735 is a three-point mounted. It's just got a couple wheels up front for contact wheels that run the units, whereas this has the rocker shaft and the hitch. Now 1735 and 1785, this piece of tool bar here and the marker assemblies are identical. The only reason they add this extra frame on this model is for the 2x2 two two, uh, cutters for when you're going to put liquid fertilizer in. There would be tanks or dry fertilizer tanks sitting up on the front, which is not something that's offered on that 1735. But on that 1735, it's got the exact same 
toolbar, but in the center it has weld abutments for the three-point hitch to attach to, whereas obviously this gusset in, you can see how John Deere did that there with the gussets and fish plates and around and everything, and the way they did their wheel frames there. But somebody kind of commented, well, you may weaken your toolbar. If not actually weakening the toolbar, I have complete faith in it. The reason I have complete faith in it is because I'm still more supported than a 1735. And if a 1735 is using the exact same bar in the back and only attaching to the three point one spot, why aren't they collapsing? So, at least that's the logic I'm going to go with. And uh, on these new markets, markers, while I'm standing here uh, explaining what's going on, uh, we did come in here and we ran a bolt through a 7 8 bolt and that cleaned up any loosage in this. There's just some wear in there. And I'm going to plate this out because these have a tendency to twist. And uh, that ties that together better so we should be a lot stronger on our markers going forward. But as I said, I'm a little limited on tooling, but we are moving along uh, positively here once I get a lot of grinding and a lot of smoothing and some more parts here made. Um, should be smooth sailing for paint and then reassemble. And you know, when you start dealing with uh, limited shop tools and trying to make things or like example, taking this leg, you know, I had to cut it to trim it to fit. Of course we gusted it out the corners, but you know, I got to cap all this and finish this out. But it, it's just, you know, if I had a nice CNC table, I would just cut some new legs off or, or bought some new tube, but they were so limited on our abilities here. But I think we'll look okay. Here's the uh, sheet of steel I had laying around some quarter inch strip or three eighth strips. I do have one of these Milwaukee saws, which is really good for cutting steel, as well as a band saw sitting right over there. And uh, I did get noticed in the background, the last video I did about this wheel right here and these hubs. Those are actually for a tile stringer bed, tile stringer trailer. That was going to be the center hub. Then we just got a junk barrel here. I'll throw everything in. This will get hauled out for recycling. Yeah, moving along. Looking pretty good, uh, in my opinion. And I appreciate all the positive comments we received on it. It's a lot more work cutting fabbing pieces than a guy thinks. Um, wouldn't be so bad if you could have laid it all out. But for that fact, if you could have laid it all out from scratch, why would you be using a uh, pre-existing toolbar and utilizing John Deere parts? And speaking of using John Deere parts, when I looked through a parts schematic, it didn't really give it dimensions on it. I just kind of got to well, go off of my knowledge and based off what I think's in the picture and how it's going to fit. So far, everything's coming out looking real good. And we'll pick up uh, later when we go into reassembly here and paint. Now we have the tanks off, we have the railings off, and everything is stripped down, ready to go to paint here in a couple days when it warms up. We'll be able to warm up the shop more efficiently. Lay down some uh, cardboard hang some plastic and we will paint this thing. The tanks are out and everything is stripped off. Any bare iron places or weld abutments I have layered some primer on to stop rust. We're going to clean the toolbar and scratch the surface out. Uh, I believe I mentioned it already but ideally we would sandblast but I don't have that ability so we're going to just do our best. So we are basically done. Our frame modifications are done here. Our blower mount there. We reinforced the markers up here. Uh, that was a notorious problem location. And like I said, everything is primed and ready to go. And any welds I didn't like, I ground out and I would um, correct as needed. Got parts there. As I said earlier, I've made everything bolt on. Parts there, handrails over there. So we're down to the bare bones here and we're going to paint it up next. Now, as far as this toolbar, if you've been following along with it, you'll know that there's several things about it that I kind of just don't like the way uh, certain things came out. I mean, it's a great, great thing. I mean, I, I did my best, but if I had the ability and had the proper tooling, uh, there would have been some modifications and changes along the way. Uh, for that fact, if I'd had the right amount of stuff, I would have scratch built, but I do like buying things from John Deere, uh, at least parts wise. That way, I, if something bends or breaks, I can at least just go down there and buy the part and not have to fabricate all of it. So, 
Uh, it's been a fun project and a challenging one at the same time, uh, just based on limited tools and abilities and we're utilizing somebody else's toolbar. But I'm content and happy the way it turned out. Uh, a lot of questions asked, well, is this going to work? Well, yeah, we ran eight row planters in the bass on our farm that were 20 foot. I mean, that's, it was built this way by John Deere, so obviously they sold it somewhere and it worked. Um, ideally, though, if I were to build scratch, obviously it would fold, and obviously it would have a flex to it. Uh, you could possibly put some hinges and make this thing into a uh, toolbar and fold up kind of like a disc where the wings would come up. Um, that's not an issue for us because where we're at, what we're going to be using this on a thousand acres of ground is located within two miles of the house. So that's the advantage that we have that uh, will work for our operation. If we were going to scratch build it, we definitely would have made some things different. But this is what I had to work with and worked with it for the following reasons. So this is what we came up with. In the next video, you guys will be seeing it in painted. And then we'll be seeing it go together. Uh, these are going to get taken outside, scrubbed with hot water. So cleaned up. So everything will be back together nice and neat. And go into an assembly.